Hello students. Today we are going to see uh, the seventh program uh, where <coughs> we have to develop a Java program to simulate round robin algorithm uh, and we have to experiment with different quantum size. So before going to see what round robin uh, algorithm, uh, just I will give a hint. Uh, I'll just explain what round robin. So round robin algorithm is uh, used especially for time sharing systems. So it is first come first uh, serve scheduling, but there is a preemption. So preemption is done based on your quantum of time slice. So the quantum is a, a time timer where the moment quantum size ends that process is preempted okay to implement this uh, round robin scheduling we will maintain a first in first out queue and whenever a new process comes we will add to that tail of the queue uh, till end of each processor means if you see process 1 has burst time 10 and till this process ends it will be given a chance to enter into that queue so that is what our uh, round robin algorithm so we're going to see what that program is so the inputs to our program are uh, the number of processes we are assuming they are arrived at time zero and uh, the burst time of each process uh, for that uh, in Java, we will create an array for uh, to store your all the processes and we will have a uh, uh, we will take a burst time of each process and we will enter. For that, I have created a class called as round robin and what that round robin is, it is a process for each process it has burst time and it's a process id so we are assuming uh, the time they have entered at zero all are entered at zero so we have burst time and process id so for that in java we need to create a instance of our class and there are so many processes hence we are having an array so class name and array so instance is created so scanner is for your input so i'll ju just take enter number of processes and this is the number of process we will take and those many process i need to store so for in array i will initialize it with those many processes so this is the variable name then now i have to take the burst time of each process so if i enter like five process i have to take a burst time for each processes so from uh, using an loop i will take the burst time so for each process it is stored in its index i uh, means it is initialized with zero till the end of processes so starting with location zero till the number of process so that if it is number 5 so it is like 0 1 2 3 4 so for each process its process ID and its burst time but here I have just incremented the I value because I am giving the process ID sequentially like process ID is 0 1 2 3 that's why I am incrementing I value I am not asking the user but whereas the burst time I am taking from user. That's why I am taking the scanner and integer value. So burst time we are taking it in integer. Okay. So after taking all the processes burst time, now I will ask what is the quantum of size. So quantum of size, it may vary. So we can give 3, 4, 2, minimum 1. So from 1 to n quantum of size I can give. Okay, so we'll see how it uh, does, uh, uh, it changes our program output.
okay so after the uh, quantum of size uh, i will just ask i'll just print what are the things you have entered like the process id and burst time and i will call my function to find out what is the average time like average waiting time and turnaround time of each process so means how my algorithm is giving average waiting time and turnaround time for that i have to calculate the waiting time and turnaround time of each processes so i'll just see the algorithm so whereas i'm just making these variables like the remaining time of each process then waiting time of each process and turnaround time of each process then the sum of waiting time and sum of average waiting time so i need to find out the average waiting time and uh, tur uh, turnaround time so i have initialized with uh, this np because i am passing the values from my function main function uh, number of uh, processes its burst time and everything and how many number of process and its quantum of size so three parameters i have passed so i am taking this so rba is of type round robin array then uh, integer means the number of processes is type int and quantum is of type integer so i am taking that as three parameters and i have declared these many parameters now first time the remaining time of each process is 10 because it is not entered into any of still all processes are here at zero time the remaining time of each process 1 2 and 3 is its burst time only okay so each process is burst time so that's why we are initializing initially the remaining time of each process is its burst time only now i have to continue this loop so that so that i have to calculate the waiting time and turnaround time so while uh, uh, i am using the while loop and we are allocating each process from 0 to sequentially that's why i am starting with 0 and number of processes i less than 2 i less than np number of processes then if the remaining time of first process because 0th location 0th process if it is greater than 0 then if the burst time is there then the process is not done yet that's why done false here done is true means we are assuming process is done its working is done but the moment it has a remaining time this becomes false okay so remaining time now i have to okay remaining time is greater than zero it has but what about the quantum so think that quantum size is something four if i given four so i will assume if remaining time of that process is greater than the quantum then i have to allocate it so how will i allocate so time becomes t plus quantum of time if you see that example if i assume process one has 10 so first process one is allocated so this is what our time okay so this is the time so t initially it was 0 so 0 plus 4 is 4 so process 1 it has executed for 4 quantum of size assuming i have given quantum 4 okay so remaining time of that process how much remaining time is nothing but remaining time of that process is initial remaining time which we have given for each process minus quantum because if it is 10 if it is 10 after executing 4 milliseconds how much remaining time is 10 minus 4 is 6 okay so that is what first iteration of a process then uh, we'll go for else part next we'll see how the if part is working then i will go for i <coughs> next i plus one so second process what is the second process we are given is burst time assuming five so five means yes five is greater than zero still it is not done because it is entering <coughs> then remaining time yes five is greater than four yes so time t is equals to t plus quantum so t is increasing this is the t for your system time so it is go on increasing this is not a process it is for each uh, uh, all the processes okay okay then okay 
okay so we will uh, the t is increasing then uh, the remaining time of uh, process 2 is 1 again we will continue i equals to i plus plus then this one i uh, so the second process then means process uh, process 3 uh, 8 is the burst time 8 minus 8 is again greater than 0 then remaining time is 8 greater than 4 is yes again t is equals to t plus 4 t plus 4 is 4 plus 4 is 8 okay so that third process is executed executed then time is increasing with 4 <coughs> again we will come back so now the for loop fails then again it will go for because i becomes 3 3 less than 3 is false then again we will go for while true that's why we have made while equals to true every time it is true because still still the processes are still running okay so we'll see how we will come out of this while loop okay so then again i equals to zero because after executing each process like one two and three again we have to start with again again one so that's why i equals to zero so again remaining time now the remaining time of that process zero process is how much it is six okay so six it is greater than zero yes then it will continue again so remaining time is quantum increased again remaining minus quantum of size <coughs> okay so that becomes two six minus four is two now then the next process is second process okay so second process then remaining time yes remaining time is greater than 0 1 but what about quantum so remaining time is greater than quantum quantum is how much 4 but remaining time is 1 so it will go to the else part now so in else part we won't add quantum because it is not greater than quantum it is less than that's why we will add remaining time that's why t is equals to t plus 1 so we'll see with the GNAND chart how it it does then after end of this because we know that process is less than quantum next time it won't come back that's why waiting time of that process we will calculate with this formula waiting time is equals to uh, total t time then the burst time of that process so the moment you calculate you will get the waiting time of that process that why ith process we are getting then remaining time becomes zero okay so you continue with that whole while loop what happens is for each iteration each iteration again the third process so third process it has waiting time uh, none because 4 is the remaining time 4 minus 4 is 0 so again else part is executed then it will tell remaining time is 0 then when you go to the next iteration like only one process is remaining so that process is executed and all remaining of waiting time becomes zero so that uh, time it won't enter into the if loop then done becomes true then they will come out of this while loop. so if everything is executed all processes are done then break break from this while loop because all are executed this while so this is very simple for loop and within that we have used uh, quantum of size so after that we have to calculate what is uh, turnaround time and waiting time so waiting time is already calculated for each process within this for loop but turnaround time is nothing but waiting time plus burst time so turnaround time is nothing but waiting time plus uh, uh, burst time of that process so if you calculate that you will get each process's turnaround time but we need uh, average waiting and average turnaround time so what we have to do is we have to calculate sum of waiting time of each process so sum of waiting time is nothing but sum sum of each process plus its waiting time so we have to add on add with iteration okay so in the same way average waiting time so we will get average how this is sum of waiting time divided by number of processes so if we divide it with number of process you will get average waiting time and average turnaround time so after getting that you just print what is the average waiting time and turnaround time so we'll just see what is the um, output uh, after running this code so just run this 
so what is the how many number of processes is 3 then for each process burst time is 10 uh, 5 and 8 what is the quantum size 4 I am giving C so we are giving turnaround time this so we won't get a GNAT chart here what we will get is the direct output so GNAT chart just see what is the GNAT chart if you observe the output uh, process ID is process 1 finished waiting time is 13 okay so waiting time of process 1 you can cal calculate here I have drawn the GNAT chart so I have drawn the GNAT chart you can calculate the waiting time and turnaround time so this is the GNAT chart you will get then if you see if you see the wait yes if you see the process 1 completes at 23 so that is what our turnaround time so process 2 can uh, finishes at 17 then process 3 finishes at 21 so turnaround times are correct means your average waiting time is also correct so how we calculate is this waiting time and turnaround time okay so this is your uh, seventh lab problem thank you